This is Plant-Based Briefing, How to Prevent a Stroke, by Dr. Michael Greger at NutritionFacts.org. And I'm Marian Erickson. This is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living in about 10 minutes or less every day with permission. And I'm pleased to have permission from Nutrition Facts to share their content. They are a nonprofit whose goal is to help clear up the confusing and conflicting nutritional advice that's out there usually presented by people with a financial interest. What they do is they summarize the latest in peer-reviewed nutrition and health research, and they have no conflicts of interest. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships. They're not selling supplements, even the proceeds from the books that they do sell and Dr. Greger's speaking engagements, 100% of those go to charity. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. How to Prevent a Stroke by Dr. Michael Greger at NutritionFacts.org Insufficient intake of fiber-rich foods may lead to the stiffening of our arteries associated with risk of having a stroke. High dietary fiber intake may prevent strokes. The belief that dietary fiber intake is protectively associated with some diseases was postulated 40 years ago and then enormously fueled and kept alive by a great body of science since. Today, it is therefore generally believed that eating lots of fiber helps prevent obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases such as stroke. Strokes are the second most common cause of death worldwide. Moreover, stroke is a leading cause of disability, and so preventing strokes in the first place, what's called primary prevention, should therefore be a key public health priority. All best studies to date found that fiber appears to significantly protect against the risk of stroke. Different strokes for different folks, depending evidently on how much fiber they ate. Notably, increasing fiber just 7 grams a day was associated with a significant 7% reduction in stroke risk. And 7 grams is easy, like a small serving of whole grain pasta with tomato sauce and an apple. What's the mechanism? Well, fiber helps lower cholesterol and blood sugar levels. Or it could be we're just eating more vegetables, or fewer calories, or less meat and fat, or improving digestion, slimming us down, lowering our blood pressure, and the amount of inflammation within our bodies. Does it really matter, though? As Dr. Burkett commented on the biblical passage that reads, A man scatters seed on the land, the seed sprouts and opens. How? He does not know. But he doesn't wait to find out. Had the farmer postponed his sowing until he understood seed germination, he would not have lasted very long. So yes, let's keep trying to figure out why fiber is protective, but in the meantime, we should be increasing our intake of fiber, which is to say, whole plant foods. And it's never too early. Strokes are one of many complications of arterial stiffness. Though our first stroke might not happen until our 50s, our arteries may have been already stiffening for decades leading up to it. Hundreds of kids were followed for 24 years from age 13 and junior high through age 36, and they found that the lower intake of fiber during young age is associated with stiffening of the arteries leading up to the brain, and so we need to promote consumption of fiber-rich foods among the young. In fact, even by age 13, they could see differences in arterial stiffness depending on diet. This emphasizes the view that increases in fiber intake should be pursued already among young children. And again, it doesn't take much. One extra apple a day, or an extra quarter cup of broccoli, might translate to meaningful differences in arterial stiffness in adulthood. But if you really don't want a stroke, we should try to get 25 grams a day of soluble fiber, which is found in beans, oats, nuts, and berries, and 47 grams a day of insoluble fiber, found primarily in whole grains. One would have to eat an extraordinarily healthy diet to get that much, yet these cutoff values could be considered as the minimum recommended daily intake of soluble and insoluble fiber to prevent stroke. They admit these are higher than those commonly and arbitrarily proposed as adequate levels by scientific societies, but do we want to be patronized as to what authorities think is practical, or do we want them to just tell us what the science says, like the researchers did here? Someone funded by Kellogg's wrote in to complain that in practice, such fiber intakes are unachievable. Rather, the message should just be, the more the better, you know, just have a bowl of cereal or something, wink wink. The real Dr. Kellogg, who was actually one of our most famous physicians, credited for being one of the first to sound the alarm about smoking, may have been the first American physician to have recognized the field of nutrition as a science, and would today be rolling in his grave if he knew what his company had become. You just listened to How to Prevent a Stroke by Dr. Michael Greger at NutritionFacts.org, 
and I'm Marian Erickson, your host. And I had mentioned that back on the 4th of July of this year, my older brother had a stroke. He was in the hospital for about a month. He is now home and still recovering, still doing therapy, trying to regain his vision, full vision in one eye, not able to drive yet, but I am glad to report that he is doing better. And if you're interested in other episodes about stroke, I will link these in the show notes, but some of them include 837, A Guide to Understanding, Preventing, and Recovering from Strokes by Drs. Aisha and Dean Sherzai, 614, What Not to Eat for Stroke Prevention from Nutrition Facts, 608, Understanding Types of Strokes and How to Prevent Them from Forks Over Knives, 517, A Game-Changing Solution to One of the Most Devastating Diseases of the Brain, Stroke by Drs. Dean and Aisha Sherzai, 506, After a Stroke, This Doctor Reversed Her Lupus with a Plant-Based Diet by Dr. Brooke Goldner at Forks Over Knives, and 338, A Life-Threatening Stroke Spurred Me to Try a Plant-Based Diet and I've Never Looked Back from Forks Over Knives. I also have a ton of episodes about fiber, and I'll link those in the show notes as well. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.